tonight. It's the cross-border rivalry as the Trojans of Bridgewater Raynham High School come to town to face your Brockton boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities. It is none other than Uzziah, the Candyman Hilly Uzziah. This girls team for Brockton High has a lot of promise. Jelani Jackson, Brianna Santos lead that effort. Hey man, I know both of them. I know they're very talented um, young ladies on the court. Um, I said to Jelani for the game Saturday, I want a 30. Um, Matt, you said that BR is undefeated, so I think if Jelani drops 30 and the rest of their teams performs, I think they'll be good. Brianna Santos driving inside to Jade. Went off the glass and in. Brockton strikes first, two to nothing. And right off the bat, Brockton looks like they're going with a very fast paced offensive effort. This is number four with it, Kelly Page, the senior captain of this team. He walks all the way in off the glass and in, all tied up at two. Jelani Jackson. Driving inside with the floater. Bounces off the rim, no good. Jade went with the rebound, she hands it to Brianna Santos. And Bridgewater Raynham comes away with it. Number 11 for the Trojans, Kaylee Matulonis. Takes it out to Kylie Peach. Wild layup, no good. Number 15 coming away with it. Ashley Rose, her three, no good. And stepping out of bounds was Danielle Wabrek. Some interesting names on this roster. Hey man, every single year we get a few interesting names. I, I've gotten used to it. I can't. I can't even be surprised. We hear some different ones all the time. Kelly Peach coming away with it. Peach working against Jelani Jackson. She gives it over to number 11, Kylie Matalonis. Round two is good. And BR has a four to two lead. Michaela Robinson to Jelani Jackson. Jackson behind the back loses it to Matulonis. And she heads the other way for the Trojans. Down low for number four. She is fouled on her way to the basket. And Kelly Page will be at the line for two shots. Kelly Peach. Comes out of the game, Shannon Lynch, the junior guard is in. Jelani Jackson coming up with the rebound. Up to Brianna Santos, Santos driving in. No good, and Daniel Wabrek coming down with the rebound for the Trojans. Matulonis with it, holding. Pump fake, now kicking it to the outside. Wide open three for Lynch, no good. Offensive rebound. And finding some open space was Danielle Wabrak and she puts it off the glass and in. Jackson to Michaela Robinson. Robinson out to Jackson for three is no good. Lynch working up the court. Santos creating the turnover and handing it off to Jelani Jackson. Uzziah, a very strong defensive effort for the boxers so far. Um, Pretty much that's what they have to do. Actually, so far from the last game I came to, the Brockton Lady Boxer actually playing a lot better than the last time I was here. So I'm actually kind of excited to see what they're going to be able to do today. Ashley Gennaros with an excellent finger roll. She's fouled as the shot went in, so she's going to try to earn three points the old-fashioned way. Six to five the score, Brockton, on, uh, Brockton down by one. Kaylee Matulonis giving it over to Ashley Rose. 
goes to Lynch. Lynch fouled in the paint. And she'll be at the line for two shots. Four twenty-two left to go in the first quarter. VR on top, six to five. Kayla Robinson gives it to Jelani Jackson. Jackson working her way inside over to Gennaros. Gennaros stops and pops long, two, no good. Santos fighting for the, re for the rebound, tips it to Jade Wint. And a wild pass is taken by Wabrak for the Trojans. Coming down with the rebound, she quickly gives it to Jackson. 345 left in the first quarter. The score is seven to five. Trojans on top. And Kayla Robinson now driving in. Gives it to Went. Her three, no good. And Kelly Page coming down with the rebound. Santos fouled. Timeout called by Brockton with 3.25 to go. Uzziah, the fouls are starting to mount for the Brockton boxers. Um, Pretty much, hopefully they just don't get into foul trouble. Hopefully their key players don't get into foul trouble because if so, I don't know how much depth they have on the bench to fill in that void that they have. Seven to five, Trojans on top. And with chance at the line are the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Number 15 is at the line, Ashley Rose. Senior guard. Making her first. Eight to five. Trojans on top. Michaela Robinson coming up with the loose ball. Jackson working against Matalonis. Wild layup, no good. And punched out by the Trojans. It will remain a Brockton basketball. Alexandra Gineros to put this one in play. Down low for Annalicia Fernandez. Her layup is no good. Trojans come up with a rebound. Three minutes to go. Out of bounds. Off of the Trojans, Brockton takes over. A little bit of confusion of which team that ball deflected out off of. Doesn't matter, jump ball called and be a Brockton basketball. A lot of confusion by the officials of which team should have possession. Call it, call it. It will once again be a Bridgewater Raynham Trojan basketball. Peach over to Lynch. 
Come up for Wabrex and she is fouled on her way up. She'll be at the line for two. Fairly sloppy first quarter so far, really by both teams, but the fouls mounting on one side of the scoreboard. Yeah, they are, but that last foul, I, honestly, I did not see. There must have been something over there that the ref saw that I didn't see, but I didn't see a foul over there. I don't know who it was on, but none of the lady boxers look too happy about that. Jade went in, Brianna Santos will take a quick breather. Rose hitting her two shots. Daniel Wabrek coming out. And number 32, Michaela Seavey is in. Shalani Jackson losing it to Kaylee Matalonis, who is now in along with the Ashley Fernandez. And Fernandez committing the foul. Have a first look at the game at Elizabeth Williams. Matalona's hitting her first shot, 10 to five. Trojans on top. Two two at the line was Kaylee Matulonis. Two eighteen to go in the first period. Eleven to five. Trojans on top. minutes to go. Got a peach with it. Over to Nina Morrison. Morrison all the way in. And her shot is blocked in. And Gennaros the other way is fouled. And Gennaros will be at the line for two. Trojans coming in with a record of two and four. The boys team for the Trojans is undefeated. They're playing the Brockton Boxers at BR tonight. The Trojans coming off a 53 to 51 win against Norwell. Eleven to seven, the score. Trojans on top. Shalani Jackson, wild layup, no good, but she was fouled. in to Jackson, Jackson to Williams. Brianna Santos back in the game, Williams with it. Her overhead pass for Jade Wint is tipped out. Brianna Santos, wild shot, counted in one. Brianna Santos with a circus effort and it finds its way to the bottom of the net. That's something that will get somebody excited. Hopefully the Lady Bosses can capitalize on that shot. Take a look at this replay. Look at number 14 right there. Both arms were being held down and she still was able to get the shot out. 
Brockton now down by one basket. Number 14, Nina Morrison with it. The long two is good. Jelani Jackson with it now. Jackson yet to hit a shot this game. Over to Williams. Williams to Jade Went back to Jackson. Jackson driving in. It is good. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. BR called for the traveler, Daniel Wabrek, coming down with that rebound. Michaela Robinson in. She replaces Alexandra Gennaros. 13 to 11, BR on top. 16 seconds to go, Brockton basketball. Jackson kicking it out to Williams. Her last second three is no good. Jackson getting the offensive board off the glass, no good. BR comes down with it. And the buzzer sounds. The first quarter has come to an end. The score 13 to 11. The Bridgewater Raynham Trojans leading the Brockton Boxers. Uzziah, an interesting first quarter. Brockton and BR both have a lot to improve on in the later stages of this game. They do, but um, the Lady Boxers are slowly getting it together. They are um, now playing how they started the game. They need to start putting in the more effort to get the ball in the basket, get the rebounds, get the steals. And overall, just take over the game instead of letting the Bridgewater and um, Lady Trojans take over. What does Brockton have to do to get their offense going? Their defense looks strong. Their offense, not so much. I know that um, they need to get, Jelani needs to get a hot hand. We, we know her from her freshman year to now, she, she's a deep threat. If Jelani can get a hot hand, I feel like she can take over this game. I remember her first varsity game, she dropped 23 points. So if, they, if that Jelani comes out tonight, then I think that they can pull away with this game. A very tall Bridgewater Raynham team. That's something Brockton hasn't had in a few years, really, is the size to compete with these bigger teams. Matthew Lonis with it now. Matthew Lonis over to Peach. Peach back to Matthew Lonis, back to Peach. Inside now for Wabrek. Her shot no good. Jade Wint coming down with the rebound. Jackson one handing it over to Santos. Santos off the glass, no good. Ashley Rose coming down with the rebound for the Trojans. Wabrek has her shot blocked. Brianna Santos coming away with the loose ball. Gets it over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson to Wint. Wint looking back for Jackson. Instead gives it to Alexander Gennaros. Gennaros all the way the in take, off the, the glass take. and in. Good take. Alexander Gennaros turning the Jets on, finding a hole. Shaking bacon, hit it with that sauce. Hey, she hit it with the sauce. Hey, that's why I'm, I wasn't shocked when I heard that she was um, the she she holds the record for most points in the game for the Lady Boxers. Robinson with the strong layup is two bodies hit the floor. Gennaros very nicely grabbing the basketball to cause to force the jump ball. Stevie back in the game. She replaces Danielle Wabrek. Wait a second, they had it. Is a Bridgewater Raynham basketball. Could be us tonight, right? The ref coming over to the scorer's table to say, listen, this is my bad. It's, it's just not having a good day calling possessions. He 
dish over to Matalonis. Matalonis taken down by Santos. Williams coming in for Santos. Just committed her third personal foul. 6.09 left to go in the first half. All tied up 13 to 13. Went called for the foul and head coach April Dingwell disagrees saying that was a clean block. She had her feet planted and her hands up. I didn't see it. I completely missed it. Main reason why I missed it is because I'm on Twitter looking into um, the various Alabama football accounts that I follow. If you know me, you know I'm an Alabama football fan. So it's like the rest of the country, right? Hey, that's them. <laughs> Win or lose, I'm Ro Tide Row. When we lost to Auburn in 13, Ro Tide Row. Gennaro's for three, no good. When we lost to Ohio State in the playoffs in 14, Ro Tide Row. I'm Ro Tide Row all the way. I'm surprised I'm not wearing any Alabama gear right now. So I was going to ask, how did you become an Alabama football fan? So very first Alabama, very first college football game I watched. Believe it or not, I play football. I've been playing football for a while now. Very first college football game I've ever watched was between Alabama and LSU. And back it was, when the rivalry was really yes, good? Yes, back when the rivalry was really good. And I don't know why. Something about the way Alabama played was just, just got me. And last week before they played Washington, I rewatched like all the national championship games that they have won and playoff games that they have lost. And I'm just like, yeah, this is my team. I love this team regardless whether they win or lose. But hey, people say what they say, but I know how I feel. Rockin' with a 14 to 13 lead. Jackson with the floater, no good. Went with the offensive board off the glass and in. Well, I do enjoy a good old fashioned Alabama Nick Saban beat down. Of course. I like, I like the Eagles, I like Boston College. Yeah, BC, BC's BC, that's home team. I mean, my best friend plays for BC, so you know I have to have love for BC. But if if it ever happened, when I I know it won't, if BC was to ever play Alabama, oh, and it was at alumni, if it was at um what's it alumni stadium, best believe I'll be sitting on the Alabama sideline. No hard feelings to to Aaron Montero, but I'd be on the Alabama sideline. That's a promise. A couple of wild shots for the boxers, none of which find the net. The Brockton's had a couple of notable players at BC the last couple of years. They have. Dominique Williams playing his last game there this season. Albert Louis Jean. Yep. Aaron Montero. Aaron Montero then dates back even further. Jay McGillis. Jay McGillis, absolutely. Coach Mike Williams, he played for BC. Gennaro's around the world and out. Fernandez coming down with the rebound, and she is able to lay it up off the inside of the rim and in. And BR forced to call a timeout. Brockton five point edge, 18 to 13. Uzziah, Brockton's turning on the Jets, and that can be a very dangerous thing with Brianna Santos, Jelani Jackson, and Alexander Gennaros. Listen, if they just keep playing hard, hustling, and scoring the ball, they have nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about at all. We have this short pause. Uzziah, the question of the day, question of the year, question of the century. What is wrong with the college football playoff, <laughs> and how do you fix it? Um, honestly, and yes, I already have an answer. 
honestly, personally, I like it better than the BCS championship, how they Absolutely. did it. Absolutely, hands down. Because the BCS, it was random. So, um, but the college football playoffs, I mean, granted, it's just four teams. First, the first problem is the committee. The committee's the first big problem. Don't get me wrong. Um, I, f they, I feel like some teams should have been in the playoffs. Some teams shouldn't have. But that's a conversation for another day. I feel like people feel like it needs to be extended to eight games or 16 games or whatever. But when you think about how the college football playoffs is and the timing it is and how long it takes, it falls perfectly in line with all the other sports. So I feel like if you lengthen it, you're throwing off the time of all the other sports. The NFL draft has to be pushed back. The combine has to be pushed back. So I feel like, granted, it, it's annoying, but I feel like it needs to stay that way unless everyone's willing to push everything back. I think there's an easier fix than that. I'm listening. I really do. You add one weekend of games to the college football playoff. Okay. You double the teams in it. Oh, so, so eight. I wouldn't mind have that. Eight because once you get past really the top six or seven, then they start to fall off. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. Honestly, I wouldn't mind one through eight. I'll, I'll look at the rankings right now and let's see the potential games that it would have been if, if they did an eight game college football playoff. Jackson earning newbie credit, following her shot, putting the rebound up and in. And Brockton has a 20 to 19 lead. Fernandez tipping the loose ball. She ran right into Kay Matulonis. I wouldn't mind this at all. So if we were to do it, if college football playoffs, was eight games would be Alabama, Wisconsin, pretty good game. Clemson, Oklahoma, I would, I would pay to watch that. That's a rematch of last year. Baker Mayfield's a problem. And so is Deshaun, so that would be a great game. Ohio State, Michigan. Ohio State, Michigan, a rematch of that rivalry weekend game. And then it would be um, Washington, Penn State. That would be an exciting game, too, since Penn State just lost uh, USC like So there's not Washington a bad did. matchup in there. Not at all. It, it, it's overall good, good football. Overall good football. And the referee's coming over to correct what was thought to be a three. It is now 20 to 19, courtesy of Matulonis hitting a free throw. Overall good football, definitely. But then again. And all you have to do is add one week. Yeah. Then again, I mean, if, if even if they did decide to um, extend it to, like, if, if possibly 16, when you think about it, the first 16 teams aren't awful either. Because you got USC at 9, you got Florida State at 11, you got Louisville at 13, Auburn at 14, and Western Michigan, who's undefeated at 15, and then West Virginia at 16. Those 16 teams aren't too bad. So, I feel, and then obviously the first four would get a first round bye, pretty much. But then, then I feel like it would get too long. It would get too and, long. Yeah. So definitely eight, yeah, eight's more realistic. I wouldn't mind the eight game playoff system. Plus, if, if, if we go to 16 teams, then you got Alabama versus Western no, Michigan. They, they would get first round bye. The top four I'm would get I'm first round bye. In the championship game, you got Alabama versus number 16, Western Michigan, if or Florida State. It's a complete and utter demolition. Speaking of which, Michaela Robinson hitting a three. That, that, that's if Western Michigan made it that deep, which personally would not happen. Think about it. It, it wouldn't happen. You know the rule, anything happens come the playoffs? Yeah. The same, the same any, rule. Any given Saturday. Any given Saturday. But when you think about it, I think did Wisconsin did beat Western Michigan in the in um, whatever bowl game they played. I don't remember what the bowl game they played in, but Western Michigan did um, did lose that game. Michaela Robinson has caught fire. 25 to 19 the score. Three, no good. Gennaro's coming down with the rebound under a minute to go in the first half. 
Gennaros coast to coast, laying it up and in. And head coach Cheryl Seavey is not happy with the effort being put forth by her Trojans in this second quarter. Wild layup is good for Kaylee Matalonis. 27-21, Brockton on top. Gennaros to Wint, Wint circus shot, no good. PR comes up with a loose ball as Gennaro hits the floor. Wide open layup for number 25, Kylie Peach. 10 seconds to go, Brockton with the basketball, no shot clock. Jelani Jackson working her way in, driving off the glass and in. As the buzzer sounds, a half-hearted shot, doesn't even find the half court line. The score at halftime is 29 to 23 Uzziah. Brockton turned it on in the second quarter. That's what they needed to do. I was actually, they played good basketball in the second quarter. Um, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen in the third quarter. I don't know what um, the coach for BR is gonna tell her her team, but I know Coach Dingwell is gonna tell them, tell her girls, don't let off off the um, off the gas. Keep playing the way you're playing. They'll, they'll be good. If they if they come out into the, in the third quarter and ball out, I, I think they'll be good. 29-23, Brockton leading the Bridgewater Random Trojans at halftime. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Bridgewater Random Trojans and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, the one, the only, Uzziah, the Candyman Hilliard. Uzziah 29-23, Brockton coming into the second half. That wasn't the story after the first quarter, but Brockton found the fifth gear. That's what they needed to do. They needed to actually step up and play ball. Play Brockton Lady Boxers basketball. And, and that's what they did. So now let's see if they can capitalize on their lead and just keep on playing ball. Alexander Gennaros, a big part of this comeback for Brockton. Puts it over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson to Brianna Santos. Santos in for Jade, went back to Santos. Here we go. Short layup is good. Here Brockton go. playing small ball basketball. That's what they need to do. They just need to just play ball, play smart. Kelly Page with it now. Page over to Shannon Lynch. Lynch to Kaylee Matalonis and Michaela Robinson is in alone or Good layup turn. off the glass and in. 33 to 25 the score, Brockton on top. Matt Tulonis over to Lynch. Lynch working her way inside. Bad angle shot finds its way in. 33-27, Brockton on top by six. Kayla Robinson in for Wint. Wint off the glass and in. There we go. Something Brockton hasn't done in quite a few years. They're looking for the layup that, first. That, that hook looked like um. What, what, what was Tony's nickname again? The Sultan of, of oh Yeah, SWAT. there we go. That was her patented move for the Lady Boxers. She looked just like her on that one. Delonte Jackson working her way in. A little bit short, gets her own rebound, kicks it out to Brianna Santos to Michaela Robinson. Wide open three is no good. And BR will take over. I'm waiting for Jelani to set behind that arc again and just pull like she used to. Because she, she used to drop buckets. 
She used to drop buckets. She did. She used to drop mad buckets. 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 First year here, she was dropping buckets. Good deal. Brockton's version of Isaiah Thomas. After he switched out to the Kobe's at halftime, because the first half kicks, ain't Didn't got no out. buckets. Ain't get no buckets. Jackson to Gennaros. Gennaros working her way in. Florida no good. Same team, same team, same team. Johnny Jackson unable to catch it before it goes out of bounds. BR takes over, 35-29. You take a look at that Michaela Robinson layup. What the Lady Boxers need to avoid is turning the ball over. Speak of the devil, Matalonis having a ton of trouble getting it up court. Jelani go, Jackson Jelani. getting in the passing lane. And the ball finds its way out hustle of bounds. Hustle points, hustle points. I'm not sure what caused Matulonis to go down, but she just couldn't get to her feet. Lynch called for the offensive foul. Brockton will take over. Swanee Jackson working away inside. Just to force it between two Trojans over to Jay Wint, and the Trojans get the victory on that. Now Lynch with a bad angle layup, and that is good, 35-31 the score. Jackson called for the travel as she was trying to get it out to Alexandra Gennaros. It looked like she got the ball off before she got called for that, but I'm not a ref. I don't know what I'm talking about. Number four, walking right in. Wow. Kelly Page walking right in, laying it up and in. Wow. That's unacceptable. Santos pump fake, works her way into the paint. Another circus shot. This one's no good out of bounds off of Brockton. Kelly Page just walking right in to get that layup. Matulonis ah. right into Brianna Santos' awaiting arms. Brianna Santos tumbling over her own feet, and she looks hurt. Getting the pass in alone, off the glass and in. Hustle points, hustle points. Kelly Page working against Jade Wint. This one around the world and out. <clears throat> Page laying it up and in. Alexander Gennaros now. Mm. Stopping and popping. Sauce. Two is sauce. Good. Hit her with the sauce. She hit her with it. Kelly Page now. Over to Matulonis. Matulonis trying to. Get it out of bounds off of Brianna Santos. She does just that. Williams back in, along with Kylie Peach, Michaela Robinson out, as well as Kelly Page. Matalonis nowhere to go. Able to get it into Peach off the glass. No good. Offensive rebound. No good. And Jelani Jackson comes down with it. Jackson working her way inside. Bad angle layup, no good. That wasn't a smart drive by Jelani. Jelani Jackson has not attempted a three yet today. She has it now, goes behind the back, one hands it over to Gennaros. Gennaros 
off the foot of one of the Trojans, gets it back to Brianna Santos. Her shot is held up, gets it back. And the shot off the front of the rim and BR takes over. Katie Matulonis with it now. Handing it over to Peach. Another whistle on the Trojans. Alexandra's upset. She got she ran into a hard screen and she yelled at her teammates, call him out, call him out. Not very often you see a freshman getting the minutes that Alexander Gennaros is for the Brockton Boxers. Hey, it's been a while. Last freshman I seen get that type of numbers was Jen the Happy Feet Caruso. Back her freshman year playing varsity basketball. Lynch for three, no good. Gennaros with the rebound. Ping pongs to Brianna Santos. Jelani Jackson steps back, gives it to Gennaros. Gennaros, long two, no good. No boxer in the area of the rebound. Matulonis comes away with it. Matulonis off the glass, sand out. A couple of bounces on the rim, and Brockton comes away with it. I'd like to see Jelani just stop and shoot the long ball like that. There we go. And it's good. Right there, Jelani Jackson from you, way downtown. If she gets hot, she gets hot. I promise you that. She gets hot. She can get she can score a quick 15. Easily. Brianna Santos called for the hold. Michaela Robinson in for Brianna Santos, who has four fouls. Yeah, inbound off the glass and in for number 14, Nina Morrison. Under a minute to go, 50 seconds, 44 to 37 the score. Brockton on top, Michaela Robinson to Jelani Jackson. A long three is no good. Williams getting the rebound. Over to Michaela Robinson, back to Williams. Williams in for Jade Wint. Wint for two is no good. down the court they go here in this third quarter. 21.5 seconds left in this third quarter. Brockton on top, 44 to 37. Not a lot of fouls in the second half for either team. Uzziah, one thing we talked about in the first half, Brockton got into foul trouble. They did. Um, as we see, Brianna is sitting on the bench because of it. But um, other than that, this quarter, they haven't been too bad. Nice Number 14, Nina Morrison spinning with it around Brockton Boxers and off the glass and in. <clears throat> Gennaros with a short two, no good. Now ripping off the rebound and Alex Gennaros is in alone with one second left. Did she get the shot off? No, she did not, the layup would have been good. 44 to 39, Brockton with a very strong defensive effort. Even better on the offensive end in that third quarter, Uzziah. Hey, I'm just happy she didn't miss that layup. We've seen so many times a girl gets a fast break layup, lays it up, and it misses. I'm, I'm just glad she didn't miss. Rocking up by five going into the final eight minutes. I want to thank the cast and crew for tonight's festivities. Of course, this is a big game. And with a big game comes a big production. This is a joint production between the Brockton High School Television Production Club. Of course, headed up by the one and only, the best teacher in all of Massachusetts. Miss T. Miss T. Lynn Tartaglia. On the Brockton Community Access side of things, we are headed up at the helm tonight. The head of the ship patches himself. The award-winning director and producer, Paul Mandeville. 
He's down in the Mandeville mothership, as we call it. We have John Pinto running a little bit of instant replay tonight. Danny Still Jr. on graphics. Kelly Page took about 17 and a half steps before the whistle was blown for a travel. But it was, it was ruled a charge against the Trojans. Jelani Jackson to Michaela Robinson. Robinson in for Fernandez back to Robinson. Robinson who likes to shoot the outside ball to Santos for three, no good. Out of bounds off of Kelly Page. Matt Delonis in for number 25, Kylie Peach. Fernandez doing an excellent job fighting for the ball and it will be a Trojan basketball after the jump ball. Lonis with it. <clears throat> Working away in now. Off to Daniel Wabrak. That, that, that was not a jump ball. Not even close. That was a terrible call. That was a terrible call. That was a clean, nice rip. All ball. Brockton getting it either way. Johnny Jackson off the glass and in. Jelani's a true leader. She takes over when she needs to. Good block. That's a good block. I saw ball. I saw ball on that. Definitely did. All ball. All ball. That's a clean block. Wow. That's absurd. Page as we take a look at the alleged block. Yeah, that was all ball. Yeah, it was all ball. Fernandez out, Santos in. And Santos immediately having an impact, getting that rebound. Jelani Jackson to Gennaros. Gennaros out to Jade Wint. Went down to Santos off the glass and in. Every single person in this gym thought she was going for the shot, and she was able to get it down to Brianna Santos, who had the open layup. Kalani Jackson didn't have her feet planted. That was an absurd call, too. I personally don't like that. Time to foul. I mean, not a ref, I don't know what I'm talking about. 48 to 41, the score brought in up by seven. Asked athletic director Kevin Cairo during halftime the answer, what, what his thoughts were on the answer to our trivia question. The college Gennaris football playoff? Lays it up and then the college football playoff, he says, I wrote a paper, I wrote a thesis on it when I was studying for my master's. He says, you take the four biggest bowl games. And I said, stop right there. You wanted to go to eight teams. Yeah, might as well. The, I don't get why the Rose Bowl out of all the bowl games is not a part of the college football playoffs. I don't understand that. They don't call it the granddaddy of them all for nothing. So the college football playoff was set up for dates, not yeah. for venues. Yeah, that's point. And another thing I don't get, I don't understand why the college football playoff games themselves aren't on New Year's Day, but they want to call it the New Year's Six. That's another thing I don't get. But I feel like if any bowl game is going to be a part of college football playoffs, it needs to be the Rose Bowl, the Cotton Bowl. What else is there? What are the other big bowl games? 
the Peach Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Orange Bowl, Orange Bowl. Yeah, like those need to be. I feel like should be a part of, especially the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is the, the Rose Bowl is the granddaddy of them all. I regardless, that needs to be a part of it. And when you think about the BCS bowl game, a lot of the times it was the Three Rose Bowl. The shot clock in Gennaro's finds the bottom of the net, 52 to 41. Now, Uzziah, the next question I have isn't really talked about as much. Should the national championship game be a bowl game? Should, like, the Rose Bowl game be delayed a couple weeks, and that would be the national championship game would be the Rose Bowl? They used to. In the days of the BCS national championship game, it used to be the Rose Bowl. Sometimes, some games, it would be the Rose Bowl. Some of those years, that's happened to, what it happened to be. I, I wouldn't mind it. I feel like the Rose Bowl is fitting enough to be the national championship game. Great venue. Who wouldn't want to go to Pasadena, California? I would. So I, I genuinely feel like it being the, the now national championship game this, being the Rose Bowl, I wouldn't mind. taking the Rose Bowl off of New Year's Day and putting it, like, on January 14th. I mean, some people wouldn't like that. I wouldn't mind. I mean, it's, it's the granddaddy of them all. Shouldn't the granddaddy of them all host the national championship game? I feel like it should. It's the I Rose agree. Bowl. I, I, I wouldn't mind it. And in some cases, in the days of the BCS, some, game, some days it would be the Rose Bowl game. And then it changed with this new playoff system. But this is only important if they add four teams to the college Yeah, if they added player. four more teams. I can but tell I'm you right. not on the committee, so yeah, I don't of know course, what I'm talking about. Of course. All I know, I'm excited even though I'm, ex I'm definitely excited for the national championship game. But I'm excited for Alabama, Florida State next year, the opening game. I'm excited about that game. Even though Dalvin Cook will most likely not be there, I'm still excited for that game. That'll be a great game. Now to Lonis with it, Brockton up on 9.52 to 43 the score. Come on, let's go, Keith! Yeah, Morrissey will get up and in. Lonnie Jackson the other way over to Gennaros. Gennaros in for Went back to Gennaros who is taken down. They're gonna rule it out of bounds, no foul. Robinson getting in the passing lane. This one goes out of bounds. Kelly Page with it spinning. Could have been called a backcourt violation. Morrison fouled on her way up. She'll be at the line for two. Now that we've debunked one problem with football, let's, let's shoot for two because why not? Do you think that schedule in the NFL should be flexed? I, we all know times of start times of games can be flexed. Should like the last eight weeks of the season, if the Patriots are undefeated and Dallas is undefeated, and they're playing week 17, the game's not gonna mean anything. Robinson for three, no good. Out of bounds. Should the NFL be able to move that from week 17 up to week 10? In a, in a prime time slot. Yeah, I feel like they, they could. I mean, then again, I might not be liked for what I'm about to say. NFL football doesn't really excite me. I, I personally, granted, I wouldn't mind it. Granted, I wouldn't care. I mean, granted, I, I still watch NFL games here and there, but I still prefer to watch college football. So whether it happens or not, my day wouldn't end over it. But I am excited to see the Patriots and the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. That'll be a great game. 
That's my Super Bowl team prediction. Don't ask me Fair for enough. a winner because I don't know yet. Fair enough. You going rookies or veterans? If you wanna, if you wanna pull that card, I would definitely say I have to go with Tom Brady. He's, come on, it's, it's Tom Brady. He's the goat. You got, you got two but minutes left in the fourth quarter. You're down I, by I trust six. Brady regardless. Get, Brockton hitting a big three right there. Put, put the ball in Brady's seven. hands in that situation, yes. But there's something about Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott, even though Ezekiel Elliott beat my single-handedly beat my team. I don't know, and did you see Tony Romo's first drive yeah, of the season? I, I heard he – Mark Sanchez passed for 400-something yards, didn't he? How, come yeah. on. There's yeah. no way a QB like Mark Sanchez can do that unless the team is great. That team is wonderful. Santos great team. On the putback. So I feel like it's, it's going to be a great game. It's not going to be a blow. It's definitely going to be a close game. You can go either way by seven. Either way by seven. I feel like. That I best believe I would, I'm I would going to I would take the game. I would take the under on that. I think it's closer than seven. Okay. So what do you think, like three? If, if it were Patriots, Cowboys, Super Bowl, I would go 27 to 23. Sound, sounds about right. Yeah, it could be that, but I, I definitely feel like it could possibly be like 21, 28, either way. Minute 50 left to go in the fourth quarter. Brought it up by 5, 55 to 50. to go. So there's nobody vocal. in Massachusetts that is as vocal or as good at yelling ball, 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 ball as Brianna Santos. Vocal. Oh, that's not a foul. That's not a foul on hey, Jaden Wynn. what can I say? We're not refs. We don't know what we're talking about. You know, the ref's always right, right? A hand check is the official call against Jade Wynn. And Ashley Rose is at the line for two shots. Hitting her first. <laughs> 35 right there. That's yeah, not at all. That, that's, nope. that's not negative. That's not a foul. There's no way that's a foul. No way. Come on, D, let's go! 135, Brockton playing the keep away, waste the clock game. Jelani Jackson over to Brianna Santos. Brockton working on the outside. Michaela Robinson to Gennaros. Gennaros to Jelani Jackson now, 14 on the shot clock. Jackson with the floater is called for the travel and it will go the other way. Bridgewater Raynham is going to call a timeout, 116 to go. Bridgewater Raynham down by three. 55 to 52 the score. Since we're discussing various football playoff formats, one that you got to play in, <sighs> the MIAA and everything that's wrong with that organization. How do you fix that tremendous mess that they created? So, um, one, I'm still upset that uh, we didn't go deeper in the playoffs, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, personally, I feel like I don't personally kind of – I like the older system better, but you had, what, 11 regular season games, and you had that one playoff game if you have the winning record. I personally like the obviously you had to win your conference, which is another conversation because now it's not the big three, it's the big five after this season, I heard. Um, 
Not official as of yet. Not official, but I heard, I heard, I heard. Now, now here's the interesting rub for you. Rumor on the street is the vocational schools are all going to um, pull out of the MIAA and create their own athletic league. They should. They're not good. Are we talking the Vokes or the MIAA? Well, there's a big three for number 20, Shannon Lynch, and we're all tied up a minute to go. The Vokes. The Vokes aren't good. Not no no disrespect to anyone that goes there, but I, I don't. There there's might be a few, but I can't name any off the top of my head that are good. Jackson with the finger all blocking two point edge with 40 seconds to go. It's gonna be a heck of a finish, ladies and gentlemen. Long two off the glass, no good. Jade went with the rebound. About a second difference between shot clock and game clock. And Bridgewater Random forced to foul. Ashley Rose called for the hold against Jelani <clears throat> Jackson. There's one person that you don't want to go to the free throw line. Jelani Jackson. BR has one more foul to give. He will use it almost immediately. Gennaros is fouled by Kaylee Matulonis. <clears throat> Next foul against BR will create a one and one situation Leo, for the boxers. Jade went fouled. 22 seconds left. And one of those down and dirty finishes, the old hack a shack. I, I hate that rule so much. I, I they genuinely need to literally get rid of that because they pro one they prolong hey, games it, to an unnecessary length and you it's mean just like the next 22 seconds it's going to take five minutes yeah not not necessarily this game but there's games where it just takes forever like first board Brockton High when they played in the holiday tournament the last 35 seconds literally took three minutes because of all the, the fouls, you know, the fouls, timeouts, all that other crap. But hey, if, if that's what it takes for you to win the game, then so be it. But I, I can't stand it. It drives me crazy. Jade went two of two at the line, 59 to 55 the score. If all holds true, BR will move to two and four. <clears throat> and Brockton will get a very impressive hard fought W against a very good team. What is the Lady Boxers record this year? They were. 0-3 oh, last time I knew. Ooh. It's kind of weird looking in this program, looking at the roster and seeing 2020. It's weird. Big three, no good. Spin around shot, eight seconds to go. Gennaros comes down with the rebound. And that will all but do it as Alexander Gennaros is fouled. We'll be at the line for a one and one situation with 3.7 on the clock. You said it's weird seeing 2020. Yeah. Next year when we see 2021, that'll be my 10th anniversary of graduating. I feel bad for you. Mother sounds, this game is over. Brockton clawing its way back for an impressive four point victory, 59 to 55. Uzziah, final thoughts on a comeback win for the boxers. Hey, as I said, if they come out into the third quarter swinging, which they did, they'll win the game. They played good basketball. There were some things they could have did better, but overall they, they played a good game. They actually, played a bit better game than they did last time I saw them play. Game ball. Ah. 
I would say, ooh, I don't know. It could either go to Brianna Santos, Jelani, because she, she did her thing at the end, or Alexandria. Maybe Alexandria, because Give Giving it to Gennaros. Give yeah. it to Gennaros. She, she just might have to get it, because she, she, she did her thing. She, yeah, I, she would get it. 59 to 55, the final score. Brockton on top of the Bridgewater Reign of Trojans for everyone here at Brockton Community Access, the Brockton High School Television Production Club. My broadcast partner, Uzziah the Candyman Hilliard. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.